discussion. My name is Luke Edwards. I've been managing European Data Week for at least the last three years. Seems a lot longer than that. Um, but my job today is to introduce our wonderful panel members who have agreed to uh, participate in our panel discussion today. Um, we'll start ladies first. So uh, to my left we have Tamarin Barker. She is the co-founder and CEO of Core Innovation Hub, which focuses on connecting innovators and resources in the energy sector. Many of whom are working on opportunities related to big data, analytics, machine learning. Tamarin has previously worked with the Square Column Array and other large scale innovation initiatives in Australia and overseas, and is keen to ensure pathways between startups and established businesses business to ensure we realise the innovation opportunities that exist. Uh, to the left of her, we have Jonathan uh, Fibe. Uh, he is the Chief Technical Technology Officer for Carnegie Clean Energy. Uh, the company is a world leader in wave energy technology and with our recent acquisition is now leading uh, is now the leading solutions provider of mixed renewable energy microgrid projects to islands and remote fringe remote fringe of grid communities. Carnegie is the only company in the world to offer a combination of wave, solar, wind, battery storage and desalination via microgrids. I didn't know that. It deserves a question. Yes. <laughs> uh, which is ideally suited to islands, off-grid communities and fringe off-grid locations. Uh, to the left we have, uh, at the end, uh, we finally have Stuart Gibbon. Uh, Stuart Gibbon is the Executive Director at the Office of the Government CIO with responsibility for developing and implementing Digital WA, the whole of government ICT strategy. Previously, he has been CIO for the Department of Training and Workforce Development and he has worked in business intelligence, criminal intelligence, statistics and science communication. Uh, we did have one other panel member, me member uh, David Broadhurst. Uh, unfortunately, he is sick, um, but he is the director of uh, the Centre for Integrative Metabolomics and Computational Biology and professor of biostatistics and data science at ECU. So he could talk all about the, the known uh, uh, art funded um, National Genome Centre, but unfortunately, he's sick. So, um, with everyone introduced, uh, Neil, I'll hand it over to you to start a nice chat all about data science. Okay, thank you very much indeed. And a nice chat it shall be. Now, um, first of all, I just want to say, um, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, yes. very good. Um, it is very much really nice to be on the sofa and so on in front of people. Um, so I'll begin um, by saying, so um, Professor Clinton highlighted a huge number of areas of importance to us in, in data science and in big data. Um, and maybe most of the people in the audience are already familiar with a lot of these, but some people aren't, particularly decision makers. So, um, I'll begin actually with um, Stuart. Why not pick Stuart? So, um, so, how do we get across the importance of big data to people who are decision makers who may be from non-data background and the importance for our economy and the future and make sure the right decisions are made? Obviously we've got to demonstrate something that is of value to them. Um, coming from a physics background myself, I love the idea of pure science and research for the sake of research because it expands our knowledge and we get there, but if you're a decision maker with a particular responsibility, that's what you tend to care about in the short term. And so we have to be able to demonstrate practical, real value that will relate to their current concerns. Otherwise, it has no value to them and therefore why should they care? Okay, thank you. Um, Tamarin, in your area where you're constantly looking at people who are looking at innovation and surrounded by this, um, what is your experience do you, with, when you actually come to decision makers? Mm. So I think obviously what Stuart said, the, the what's in it for me um, is, is, the, is the driver when founding and when it, um, explaining any uh, new opportunity or presenting um, an MVP or market value proposition to a, to a customer potential customers, so that's definitely how you have to communicate. Um, but I think coming from the more sort of startup entrepreneur community and environment, the more that we can actually see businesses being built around data, um, I know Luke doesn't like the term good data, he thinks it's not data, so around data, so it's data proper if you like, um, the, more, the more we can see those businesses gaining traction um, and being able to demonstrate what they're doing, um, the more likely you have that knock-on effect to other other companies. So 
Of course, you've got uh, majors like Woodside with the work that they're doing with IBM and Watson um, at, at that very significant level demonstrating the, the, the impacts that it's having on their business and the opportunities. But I think it's exciting that, that startups and smaller, smaller scale businesses can demonstrate uh, value as well um, and being able to create that kind of, you know, if, if, you're not, if you're not looking at your data, you're missing out on a whole range of strategic opportunities, serious cost cutting opportunities and serious efficiency gains. Mm -hmm. So I think it is actually demonstrating businesses in action uh, around data. And maybe not speaking about data in the first instance, speaking around um, this is actually what you have to gain. And some of those businesses will be set up purely because they're going to look at data and be able to understand and, and deliver value to other businesses. That, that's right. So tomorrow we have a panel um, in the spirit of Big Data Week. <laughs> we have a panel at CORE um, and of, we've assembled uh, five entrepreneurs and founders who are talking about how they've got their business around it. But of course they, they didn't go out and go, oh, there's all this data, let's do something. Um, they went at it from the, there's a problem in, in, in the sector, this is how we're going to tackle it. And, and you know, data was a bit like Health Engine was one mm -hmm. uh, Luke mentioned, so, so the co-founder of Health Engine was speaking about. Um, but yeah, I think the resources sector presents a significant opportunity, which is also why um, the pause of supercomputer is about 25% I think, mm -hmm. of its resources to, to that sector to say if you're not, you're not doing something with your data by now, let us help you. <laughs>